All right, Shalom. Shalom. Before we get started with this lesson, all right, we're going to give all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakudash. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, Shalom, Sada Akim, and his truth and sincerity. And we're just going to do this lesson going into how the Lord is going to guide us through these times, man. All mm -hmm. right? Okay, the Lord's going to guide us through these times because we're in some very evil and dark times, all right? We're coming into the time of Jacob's trouble, all right? We're leading up, up into that time, all right? And, and there's a lot going on, all right, with, with the impox, all right? There's a lot going on in the world, all right? Geopolitically, with all these other, uh, Russia, all their allies, mm -hmm. all right? So the Lord, we need to have faith in Yahweh Bashan al that he's going to get us through the, these uh, these dark times, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we can we can, we can get it. Okay, this is Psalms chapter 23, <clears throat> verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2, he right, made. Yahweh, Yahweh Bashan Yahweh Shah is our shepherd, man, the, the good shepherd, mm -hmm. all right? That's one of Yahweh Shah's uh, nicknames, the good shepherd, mm -hmm. okay? Because a shepherd guides, guides the sheep. A shepherd makes sure the sheep uh, stays out of danger, all right? Just like uh, King David, all right? How he protected the sheep. Yep, Read exactly. On. Verse 2, he maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Right, and that's speaking about the, the truth. All right, that's speaking about the, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in the scriptures. That the Lord, he makes us lie down in, in the green pastures, all right? He, he leads us uh, beside the water. That's that's speaking about the living waters. Yeah. Read on. I got a precept. Come on, you got Does it say he leads me beside still waters, which still coincides with stability? Um, so this is Isaiah chapter 33. <clears throat> Verse 6, it says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. It says, And strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. All right, so as the, the scripture said, He leadeth me beside still waters. That's coinciding to the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures. Because when waters are turbulent that's due to confusion that's due to um um lack of understanding corruption the still waters coincide coincides with stability and that's what the lord is going to do for the tabernacle of david for the elect in these um, latter days got it kind of verse, verse three he restored my soul he leaded me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake Man, so. Right, and when it says he he restored he restored our, our soul, that's when he brought us back to this truth, man. Right, perfect. He stirred up our pure mind by by way of remembrance. Mm, yeah. All right, and it said, uh, read the part after that, Bubba Bashar. He leaded me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake, and He led us to the truth, man, for His name's sake. All right, which that that shows you that we have His name. Okay, His name is Yahweh, and His Son's name is Yahweh Shah. We have his name, man. All right, yeah. because he made a promise to our our forefather, uh, our forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. Yep. So for his name's sake, because he made that promise with us, he gave us his truth. Yeah, exactly. Okay? I got a quick precept for this. Proverbs eighteen, verse ten: The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous runneth into it and is safe. So those are the the righteous are going to run into it regardless. You know, the real question is: Are you of that righteous number? You know, the righteous are going to believe in the true name of the Heavenly Father and going to be God's son, Yahweh yeah. Bashem Yahweh Shai, the NRB. Come so, come in Sarah, he said, Let shall call upon his holy yep. name. Yep. You know? So, just to add to your point. Come cool. We have the name, man. Mm -hmm. All right? That's undeniable. You know? Ooh. Yeah. Yep. Man. You got something? Oh, absolutely. Goodness sake. This is, this is definitely an excellent point. This is Ezekiel, the 39th chapter, the 7th verse. Yep. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. Woo! What is going on? <laughs> what? I'm going to read that part again. It says, so I will. This is Ezekiel, the 39th chapter in the seventh. Now, this took me back. This is Ezekiel, the 39th chapter in the seventh verse. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. So what is this talk about? We don't have the name. 
What does this talk about? The name of the Heavenly Father is not important and it's not pertinent that we go into the name. It's not pertinent that we go into the Hebrew. It said he would make his name known in the midst of his people Israel. In continuation, it says, and I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. What are you guys doing? This is talking about the, this is talking about the elect, by the way. But what are you guys doing? You are polluting the Heavenly Father's name. What are you doing? You call him, you call him um, Jesus. You call him Jesus Christ. You, you call him, what do you call him? Most High God. That's not his name, man. The, Mo, the Most High, you know, there's a Hebrew term for Most High that's not the same thing as the word Yahweh. Right, that's just a title. That's just a title. Mm -hmm. God is not God. 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 God, God means power. The scripture said, ye are gods. Are we Yahweh? No, we're not. Yahweh is a separate entity, and he, and he has a name that should be respected and should be honored. I'm going to finish this off. It says, it says, and not let them pollute my holy name anymore, and the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel. And the elect gonna declare the, are going to declare the name in the land of our captivity, man. You got it up. Uh, continuing on with uh, Psalms 23, verse 4. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Right, and that's speaking about us. Uh, King David was really prophesying about us in these times. Because the valley of the shadow of death, that's speaking about America, all right, which mm -hmm. is known in, in the scriptures as Babylon the Great or the daughter of Babylon, all right? So even though we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, even though there's nothing but death all around us, all right, even though we're in this low this low place, this low condition, we, we ain't going to fear no evil, man. We ain't going to fear mm -hmm. uh, all the, the pestilence and plagues that Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai is sending upon this place, man. We're not going to fear that. We ain't gonna fear the fear the uh, the impox. We're not gonna mm. gonna fear. Hey, we didn't uh, fear the the CV. All right, we didn't we didn't fear that. All right, we, we're still uh, pushing strong. We didn't compromise. All right, mm. we didn't take that that job. Right. Okay. And then America is consider this. America is known as New Canaan. Mm. America is actually a city in America in the Connecticut called New Canaan, but America is known as New Canaan. Which, when you go into the Hebrew word Cana or uh, Kanaim, uh, the term means lowland. Which, what is a lowland? A valley. That's what that is. And that's why it's considered the valley of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. All right? It's a land of darkness, of gross darkness, man. All right? Got it, bro. Go ahead. All right, read that last part of the show right. about the rod. Uh, get that. Uh... Psalms 23, verse 4, again, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Right, and not only are we not going to fear that evil, we know that Yahweh Hashem is with us, man. Psalms 34 and 7. Mm -hmm. We know that the presence yeah. of the Lord is with us, man. Yeah. All right, he, he, the Lord is sustaining us, okay? And it says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's speaking about this truth, the comforter. Okay, we have the, the knowledge of the scriptures. The brother brought out Isaiah 33 and 6. All right, we have this wisdom and knowledge. That's what's keeping us stable. So that's why it, it says what it says, man, that the Lord, his word comforts us. Mm, All right, exactly. you got it. Oh, just, to add to, just to add to that comfort, I was going to go to Deuteronomy, but the spirit changed. Truth, we go to Job <coughs> chapter uh, 5, verse uh, 19. And it reads, he shall deliver thee in six troubles, yeah, and seven, there shall no evil touch thee. Mm. Verse 20, in famine, he shall redeem thee from death, and in war, from the power of the sword, mm. thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. Because this is all prophesied in the scriptures. These things are going to happen regardless. <clears throat> it's just about our stability, and, and when those things do take place, you know, our, our faith lies in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, because Lord is gonna He's gonna allow these things to, to happen, but He's gonna allow deliverance in a way to escape His will. Come. Verse twenty-two, it reads, "At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh." That means if you're laughing at, at, that, at that point or that situation, that means you have some comfort. The Lord allows you to be protected. You know, it says, uh, "It says neither 
shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth, for thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field. Like the brother just mentioned, the Lord's going to guide us and allow, allow you know, these the, the animals, the newly, newly created creatures and violent ass people out here to be at peace with us. You know, that's going to be that's going to be the Lord showing his protection. We're going to we're going to acknowledge that protection. You no, know, Lord, willing, Lord, willing we be a part of that number. But when it does happen, we're like, hey, boy, that ain't nothing but the Lord. Because he just killed 10 folks right over there. Yeah, but walk yeah. right past, you know, walk right, walk right past me. You know, I, I got a quick preset to what you just said. OK, yeah, yeah you go ahead. So, yeah. This is a, a classic Proverbs chapter three and verse five. It says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lead not unto thine own understanding and yeah. all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct that path. All right. So like the brother said, the Lord in that day, he's going to guide us, man. All right. He's not going to uh, lead us into destruction. He's going to lead us out of the way of destruction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lord willing. Yep. I'll reread that. Uh, Job chapter five, verse 23. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. Mm -hmm. So at the end, at the end, all be all wow. the elect are going to be guided in the day of trouble. However, however, so the Lord have it, an angel or a person or uh, an animal come talk to you. However, the however the Lord sets it up for you to be guided. The Lord, the guide is going to be there. You know, we're going. It's going to be up to us to have that discernment and realize it. You know, right? He's the ultimate director. Yeah, he directs us. Yep. Yeah. That, that was it on that. Yeah, that that was that was yeah. That's it. That's it. That was the point on that. I, I got something. All right, you got. Something. Yeah. This is uh, Psalms chapter ninety one. And I'll start at the top. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the, of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. All right, that's speaking about us, the hopeful elect, all right? Because we're, we're in this truth, this is this is a secret, this truth, all right? Because everyone, uh, everyone isn't invited to the party, so to speak. All right, yeah. this is for, for VIPs only. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said, uh, that's this, this to back your point up, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 goes to that uh, voc vocation. Yep. It goes to that high calling invitation. Ooh. You know? That's why this is a secret place. V mm -hmm. Verse 2. It's a summoning. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Everyone ain't invited. Right. It says, verse 2 I will say of the Lord, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, He is my refuge mm -hmm. and my fortress, right. my power. In Him will I trust. Yep. All right. Because these times, we're coming into some, to some terrible times, man. It's going to get ugly. The, the scripture says it's a time like never before. All right, so we're gonna need a fortress. All right, we're gonna need that 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 um that protection in that time, man. Yeah, yeah. The Lord, He got a protection. It says in uh, Daniel twelve and one that, that Michael, yeah. the archangel, got to stand up for us and, and fight for us in that time. That's how bad it's gonna get. Mm -hmm. yeah. Verse three, it says, "Surely He will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler." And the noise and pestilence, that's speaking about the, the thermal nuclear missiles, which that's going to destroy America, mm -hmm. all right? And it sounds like a broken record, but we got to keep bringing it out. Oh, it's yeah. the truth. Gotcha. It's going to happen, man. America is going to be destroyed. Verse 4. The reason the Spirit has us continue harping on it because it's that important. Come. You know, mm -hmm. the warning about the thermal nuclear missiles. Because, see, the thing is, you're not going to get a chance to fix it because it's going to happen in one hour. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have, if you don't, if you don't get the job done correctly in the allotted time, you're done because the the retribution, the judgment is gonna come as a thief in the night. So yes, we're harping on it continuously because there's no oh, there's no do overs, man. You, you, the scripture says, the scripture says in John the ninth chapter, it says, work while it is day. It says the night coming when no man can work. That's why we're speaking about it because it's day. And when night comes, don't worry about it. We won't be speaking about it because no man's going to work in that hour. You won't have to worry about the prophets be, um, harping into your ears in that hour because in that hour, there's going to be a famine of the word and a famine of food. And you're going to have to suffer both because you need to hear to the prophets. Go ahead. Come on, verse 4. He shall cover thee with, the, with his feathers. And under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Mm. Verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. Mm. The nuclear missiles. Right. It says a thousand shall fall at thy right side. So like a, a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. 
So we're getting ready to see a lot of uh, a mass death, all right? We're getting ready to see a lot of people just dropping like flies, man. It says, let me read that one more time. It says, a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. So thousands upon thousands of people are getting ready to die, man. All right, of all type of pestilence, of all type of uh, uh, war, okay? All type of uh, calamities. The Lord's about to do, do some amazing things, man. Just like he did to, to uh, ancient Egypt. This is modern day Egypt. Exactly. Then, the, then, then the comfort it said it shall come. It should not come nigh thee. That's right. why this. That's why the scriptures are the comforter. That's why it's good news to us. Yeah. You know, because when, when you actually believe in it, it's like all right. It's a chance. It's it's a good. It's actually a great chance. Yeah. You know, because it's only a, a remnant that actually believe in the entirety of the prophecies. You know, but you got it though. Con, that's a great point. Verse eight. It says, "Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked." Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Mm -hmm. So we don't got to worry about any any of these uh, diseases, man. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. We don't got to worry about none of this because that's for the wicked to be destroyed. All right. Okay. It says only with thine eyes shall I see uh, the judgment of the wicked. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's not for us. That's for the wicked. That's for the, the, these people who, who blaspheme the, the Heavenly Father. That's for these people who don't acknowledge the Heavenly Father. That's yeah. that's who that, that those plays are for, man. Just to back your point up, just, to, just uh -huh. to prove that the brothers is not talking, because you know people think we just be ranting. This is uh, Sirach chapter 40, verse 9. Death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamities, famine, tribulation, and the scourge. These things are created for the wicked. And for their sakes came the flood. So like the brother just mentioned, man, it's, it's, before, it's for the wicked, man. Those that have been arrogant and, and, and mocking and coming against the power and the truth of Yahweh by Shemiah, I'll shine the Holy Scriptures. That's why these things are about to happen. For judgment's sake, man. We're in the time of judgment, you know? But you got it, bro. Come on. That was, that was it on that. Come on, come on. Yeah, you had something? Yeah. Yeah. Let me get out real quick. This is um, <clears throat> the book of Psalms. Yeah, so this is the book of Psalms, chapter 137. Psalms, chapter 137, verse 1, it says, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sit down. Showing you that, what is this guy, um, this guy, show me the Bible where David is a prophet. <laughs> show me right. in the Bible right. where David is a prophet. <laughs> Well, meanwhile, David is prophesying about the Babylonian captivity, and this does also coincide to the, the Babylonian great captivity as well, which is so, America. It's twofold. It's, it is twofold. It says by the rivers of it says by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Now, I'll speak on the Babylonian captivity because in Babylon you have the river Tigris and Euphrates, and of course those are you know people are going to live the. The, the cities were located next to the rivers, all right? And where was Jake located? In the cities, all right? The, the populace was located next to the rivers, but that's where the money was, the trade was, the vegetation was, the hunting was, all right? It says, that, but it says, there we wept. And why did we weep? Because we wanted to restore Jerusalem that was destroyed in, five, in 580, what was it, 587 BC, all right? By Nebuchadnezzar. The king of Babylon, all right, and by the Edomites who burned down our temple, we wanted mm -hmm. our land back. We were in captivity. We were being slaughtered. We were being persecuted. But likewise, do we weep in the landmass of traffic, which is America? These rivers, that's what that's what unctions trade. All right, a river basically coincides to trade. All right, and well, America is what? It's the landmass of trade, man. It's the landmass of traffic. Okay, it's the it's the highest the landmass with many highways, many highways, and we also are weeping, all right, in the United States of America because what we see that our landmass, our homeland Israel, has been defiled by those Hamas. Yeah, we'll start off with Hamas because guess what? You damn Palestinians don't belong there either. We'll we'll bring you out, Islamic Jihad. We'll bring you infidels out. 
you don't belong there either. Of course, you Israelis, you guys are about to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles. All of you. None of you belong there. So we, but we weep and, and cry because what? We want to be back in our landmass that these heathens are trodden down until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And we understand mm -hmm. that we in captivity. We got to go through this filthy, these the filthy conversation of the wicked. These damn heathens all around America being nasty and degenerate and irrational and illogical, man. All right, with all this this lewd behavior, we got to deal with this on a daily basis, man. All right, being we see, it's like I ain't no, you go ahead, go ahead. We got to see these people eating all type of un unclean food, eating dogs, eating uh, octopus and shit like that. And we, we can't do nothing about it. We can't do nothing about it. We got to see these people committing, they commit acts the way they committed in Sodom. Mm -hmm. You know, they're committing Sodomite acts on the just right, especially in Atlanta. Lord have mercy. Yep. Please. Vile affections. Vile affections, man. Vile affections. The affections that deserve to have you liquidated. But yeah. we have to deal with this. We have to deal with, we got to deal with these women, these proud, filthy ass women, man. We have to deal with their proud mouths and being disrespected by these heathens, man. All right, we have to deal with eating foul food. We have to deal with the water sources being poisoned. What, what the fuck is Esau doing? Esau's poisoning the water. We got to deal with this. And so that's why when we were by these rivers, when we were in these land masses, we wept, man. All right, it says, it says, there we sat down. Yeah, we wept when we remembered Zion. And the Lord says um, he's going to stir up our pure remembrance. All right. The Lord has put that remembrance upon us um, essentially through Abba Bivens going on down to our elders and teachers, um, apostles and elders, the great millstone. They're, they're teaching their doctrine, the prophecy, uh, and their breaking down of the prophecy has brought us back into remembrance. So when we remember who we are, we remember our culture, we remember our identity, it makes us, the scripture says, surely oppression maketh a, a wise man mad. So it makes us upset, but it also makes us separate. All right? It also makes us separate. It makes us, like, not be okay with the way society is going. We're not okay with this. We're not okay with this world, man. We're not pleased with the way the society is situated. It's a problem for us, man. All right. We don't love this place. We don't. We, we can't love this place because this place is the world. This is the world. America is the epitome and the apex of the world. All right. I'm gonna continue on. It says, "We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof," meaning we stop playing the music. But guess what? You got you got these guys. Uh, IUIC. You got these guys. Um, um, what is these guys? Sakari. Well, they, oh, I'm going to rap, I'm going to rap, I'm going to talk some IHBK. shit. IHBK, all these, I'm going to be cute and rap and try to be cool. This is what these niggas doing. And, but the scripture says we hang our harps, meaning we're not, we not, this is not the time for us to be singing and dancing and doing all this other shit, man, and publicizing it to the nation. No, what we're doing is prophesying the destruction of America. Right. We're crying and sighing, man. That's, that's our music. That's our song. That's the song of the elect. Well, right. that's why it says in Proverbs, it's, it's better to be in the house of mourning than the house of mercy. It Dang. says that. Exactly. It says that. Exactly. You should have considered that, young man, because you guys are not considering that. All right? You're just doing what you want to do, bro. Sakari, bro, come on, man. Y'all, you guys know you, come on. Y'all got to stop going off. You guys got to repent. You got to stop following Alazar. Alazar, Alazar just going to do, he, Alazar going to do what he going to do because he got to fulfill the position in prophecy. That is Alazar coming back from the ancient world of Zakara. That man just got to do what he got to do. But you guys who follow him, it's a way out, man. It's a way out. You got to repent and stop and stop being consumed by your own vanity, man. All right, and follow the true elders of the nation of Israel. If the scripture says, give double honors to the elders that do rule well. That's what the scripture says, man. All right. Now, I understand the bigger picture, but you guys don't understand the scriptures, man. You're just going to do what you want to do. That's fine. All right? It says, um, for there, they that carry us away captive require us a song. 
And they that wasted us required us of mirth, saying, Sing us one of these songs of Zion. How shall we sing Yahweh's song in a strange land? So how the hell y'all niggas singing Yahweh's song in a strange land? See? Oh, I'm going to merge the truth with the rap, and I'm going to wake the people up with the rap. Mm -hmm. Nah, that ain't what it's, nope. That ain't not the lit. You going to do that, but not the lit. That's not the pathway of Yahweh by Shem man. All right? It says, it says, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the, to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. I got to get verse 7. Remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof, in which the children of Edom, which are you Edomites, which is the self-proclaimed white race, no, not because of your skin color, but because of the seed that goes back to Esau, Edom, which just so happens for the most, the majority of you guys are so-called white people, all right? It, but during the time of the Babylonians, what did you say? You said, raise it. You said, destroy the temple. And you assholes took the initiative yourself to burn down the temple. That's what the scripture says. The Edomites burned down the temple, man. It was always you. It was you during the time of the Greeks. It was you during the time of the Babylonians. And it was you during the time of the Romans. And it's you now in the revival of the Roman Empire. And now you're trying to raise a temple, which is the elect. You're trying to destroy us by putting um, ele electronic devices inside of our skin. And you're going to try to exterminate us, but you're about to lose bad, man. It says, in a continuation, it says, O daughter, uh -oh, o daughter of Babylon, Showing you that America is the modern day Babylon, mm -hmm. which America is run by Edomites. It says, O daughter of Babylon. Why is the Lord calling Edom the daughter of Babylon? Why is that? When was that? Well, it's right now. It says. Right, but, but the last Edomite was Hera. Yeah, that don't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. That makes no it's sense terrible. at all. That's a lie. And Vogab, you the last Edomite. <laughs> <laughs> like the last Mohican. <laughs> Boy, Boca, you Edomites are still here, man. Hey, in a thousand years from now, he's going to be the last one that they kick into the fire. And guess who's going to kick him in the fire? <laughs> guess. Saul. Saul going to kick you in the he's fire. Man. Because he's a team. He's, a, he's an Amalekite. He's an Amalekite. Yep, it says, O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed, happy shall he be. That rewarded thee as thou hast served us. When did that take place? That's, that, that's about to take place now. That never took place in hi historically. Mm -hmm. Verse 9, it says, Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. That's what the scripture says. Go ahead. Come on. Come on, I got something. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> this is 1 John chapter 2 and verse, I'll start at 15. It says, Love not the world. Mm -hmm. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. All right. So the brother was going going into it beautifully. How we're not to to mix this truth with the world, man. All right. All right. Reading on, it says verse sixteen: For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse seventeen: And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of the Most High, Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, abide it forever. All right, so this world is getting ready to pass away, man, and you can clearly see it. Mm -hmm. This whole society is just collapsing, man. Yep. And, and all aspects of this society is collapsing, all right? Financially, morally, yep. okay? Uh, uh, dealing with, with diseases, man. Yep. Damn. This place is just collapsing, it's passing away. Yeah. Yep. You can clearly see if your eyes are open that this place ain't got it, man. It's not gonna last. You got cancer. Con. Yeah. All right, and that's why the, the the ones that are wise that they they see the evil coming and they're hiding themselves. That's all right, right. Yep. low willing we, we be those men. All right, mm -hmm. but the simple pass on and are punished. punished. You punish because you're gonna take the karakma. Kind. You punish yeah. because you see we see evil. What are we warned about? What is the main thing we talk about? We warn about it so much it's to the extent that we can't even really talk about it on this YouTube platform. We right. gotta say code words like yeah. karakma and chaiksai stigma. But we don't have to go into the Greek, they say. Okay. But in the Greek, you get the understanding of what the karagma is. All right? 
you got to understand that this man is about to push, he's about to push the CHIP. That's the main, that's the hour of temptation that you have to understand we're about to come into. And if you, if you are not adhering to the true prophecies and the true, essentially the true spirit of Yahweh by Shema Shah, you're going to pass on and be punished. You're going to take it, bro. You're going to take it and be destroyed. We're warning you because we don't want our people to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles. But if you if you take that karagma, you're done. Right. Hey, but it's already predestined yeah. that it's gonna be two thirds, man. Yeah. It's gonna yeah. be a lot of, of our people that's gonna take that thing, man. And it's, it, it, we already see that with that V, that that's what it's leading to, man. The karagma. All right. Yep. yep. Exactly. It's leading to that. Poor one. Uh, that was it. That was it. Come on, and I just, I just land back off. And they, these things show you that hey, we are, un, we are under currently the curses of Yahweh by Shmi Shah. You know, just like uh, the land back to Deuteronomy <laughs> chapter twenty-eight, oh, yeah. verse uh, sixty-one. It reads, "Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed." That hey, we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, we walk, we're walking through. A, a dangerous and, and, and evil times, man. You know, on every on every side. You know, mm -hmm. sorrow on every side. Whatever way you look at it, you know, it's it, it, whichever way you go is death. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, skipping on down to verse sixty six of Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight. This is a part of the curse. This is this is to prove to you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that you are the hey, you are the people of the Bible. You know, you're suffering these these situations more than any other nation on the planet Earth. You know, who, yeah, they, they came out with that article that said, uh, so called blacks yeah, and Hispanics did. are disproportionately suffering from that, that thing, man. Yeah, that, that thing, exactly. They did, they did, they did. They did. they did put that out, man. That and validates they, what this brother just said, exactly. In verse, um, verse 66, it reads, And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night. And that's what the brothers mentioned earlier within the lesson. What this is not our risk. You know, you fearing day and night. You don't know you're going to make it the next week. You may plan, but you, you always worried about something. You know, it says, And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night. You know, you in fear, man. You got to you gotta lock the door every time you turn around. You got to look over your shoulder. You know, you don't like it because your life hanging down. You're under the curses. You know, you got to, you got to, damn it. We damn near consider our own people more than the heathen. You know, because our yeah, people, yeah. our people are are dangerous, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, it says, "It shall have none assurance of thy life." You have zero assurance, man. You know, that's that's a, the curses. And the kingdom of heaven not gonna be worried about a damn thing. No more mm -hmm. death, no more sorrow, no more a, no more struggle, no more crying, none of that in the kingdom of heaven. You know, so this is a show right now, man. This is a this is a, this is a very low state of life that we're living right now. But hey, we seek a new a new earth. In a new was, world shit to come. That's yeah, what we hasten. Yeah, you know? I was just thinking about, I was going to say, yep. new heaven and new earth. Exactly. That new rulership, man. Mm -hmm. That refreshed rulership under your power of Yahweh by Shem And the Israelites is going to rule on the earth, literally. You know? Yep. So, yeah, that's, that's uh, you had something else? Oh, I was looking, because that last thing you said, we're not going to deal with that in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's Revelation 20. We're going to go. You know what they said where it says uh, the former things are past? Yeah, that's, that's Revelation 21. It should be yeah, 21. 21, 21, 21, yeah. 21 4. For these things, are, uh, for the former things are past it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Come on, we, we can end off with this. Okay, come on. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 21 and 4. It says, And the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, mm -hmm. yeah. and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are, are passed away. All right, so the brother, he mentioned it, man. The kingdom of heaven, all right, we, we ain't going to have to deal with these curses no more, all right? We ain't, ain't going to have to deal with no diseases. We ain't going to have to deal with uh, 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 being worried uh, 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 if our own people is going to rob us, mm -hmm. all right, if our own people is going to try to bring it to our house. We're not going to have to worry about those things, man. It's going to be a thing of the past, all right? So even though, like, for balance sake, we brought out all the evil that's coming, that's going to be the, the end of it, man. All right, once this place is destroyed, uh, the elect is going to be beamed up in the what the world ignorantly calls UFOs, which are the chariots. All right, and we ain't going to have to deal with this shit no more. So that's the balance, man. Yep. All right? He's going to wipe away all tears. Yeah, that's it. You got it, though. Con, con. So, Lord willing, this, this lesson was edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. Again, uh, we're going to give all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, 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 Yahweh
Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Shalom to the elect. Hey, shalom. Keep on pushing. Bob, Bob, man. Bob, Bob.